Okay, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event where we cover anything that may be of interest to librarians, both in Nebraska and across the country. Um, we do these sessions live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but they are recorded. So if you ever need to watch, if you aren't able to join us on Wednesday, you can always watch our recordings that are available on our website going back to, um, all the way back when we started in January 2009. Everything is there on our website. Um, we do all sorts of things on Encompass Live, interviews, uh, web tours, mini training sessions, pres presentations. Basically, if anything's vaguely related to libraries, I'll put it on the show. <laughs> Um, and we do bring in guest speakers from outside, um, but we also have commission staff that do some presentations as well. And that's what we have today. Uh, sitting to my left is Laura Johnson, who is the CE Continuing Education Coordinator here at the Nebraska Library Commission. And this is the third um, in her three-part series, the last one, about government um, information online, web information you can find about federal government agencies and departments and anything. Um, on the web. So this is part three. There's two previous ones. The recordings are available out there if you want to go and watch them. Um, you don't have to watch them in order. They're three separate things talking about different areas of the government, but they are together to cover hopefully everything we can think of. <laughs> That's as close as we can get. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So go ahead and take it away. Laura. Okay. Thank you very much, Krista. Hi, I am Laura. Um, we're going to talk today about independent agencies and government corporations. Um, part one talked about um, cabinet departments. Part two talked about the legislative and judicial branches and the White House. And part three is the independent agencies. Uh, these are also part of the executive branch. Um, and, well, it turns out this isn't everything. <laughs> but, but it's going to be, um, I didn't want to do, you know, a trilogy that became a, uh, what do they call that, when it's a set of four. Authors well, seem to do that all yeah. the time. But the I fourth didn't think book in my trilogy. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't want to do that. So, before I got started, um, last time I talked a lot about Thomas, the um, uh, utility that the Library of Congress puts out to get legislative information out. Um, and I extolled its virtues. Well, that very same day, I mean, that afternoon, Fairly we saw an announcement that they are going to have a new thing called Congress.gov. Mm -hmm. um, it won't be replacing Thomas until the end of 2014, so we have a little while yet. But you might want to take a look at Congress.gov because it, too, will be a way to access legislative information, it makes it much easier to find that information. I oh, just wanted to bring that up. Um, most of the information I'm presenting today, um, you can kind of find in two places. The United States Government Manual, a memorable uh, print uh, reference, is online, and you can find lists of independent agencies there. But you can also find them on USA.gov. And I thought USA.gov was, well, really, when you really get into it, it's pretty spiffy. So I thought mm -hmm. most of this I've done on slides because slides are just faster than doing it uh, live on the Internet. But I thought we might go live to USA.gov so we could show some things about it. Um, it's um, a standard government issue, kind of. It has several different uh, pictures on the front, all of them seem, the government agencies seem to. But you can get services, so you can look it up, and if you go for more services here, there's a huge long list. Of things, and for instance, uh, clinical trial eligibility, um, consumer publications for online shopping, copyrights, Credit cards, how to file a complaint. Um, farmers markets near you. Federal forms. Gas prices in your area. So there's a, a, quite the, the um, variety of stuff that you can find that the government provides. Then uh, you can, they have a lot 
uh, you can explore topics. And if you go for a topic, let's look at um, travel and recreation. That sounds like fun. They have a lot of links to various subjects. So if we look at, oh, how about international travel? Mm -hmm. Then they have links to a bunch of things that the government provides on international travel. So if you want um, the passport requirements. No. Well, isn't this book? There. Then this is how to get a passport. So they, they really, um, they've given us several ways to access information. You can access it by the services you need, by the topic. You can find government agencies. And if we go for federal government, this is the executive branch, then the executive branch is made up of several parts. And we can look at independent agencies and government corporations. And that takes us, oh, well, we've got boards, commissions, committees, but I won't complain. You see a list of those. So, you know, by agency. Here's the independent agencies. Now, I will not cover all the independent agencies today. As you can see, there is quite a lot of them. Um, but I think we'll give you an idea of them. Um, at least now you know where to go to find other agencies. Well, yeah. that's, I really recommend this USA.gov. It's really nice. Um, they even give you links to state and local government. Um, and for instance, uh, and then you can contact government, and they give you a lot of contacts. So they're really trying to provide access points to um, government information. And I think they do a fairly decent job. Okay, we'll go back to the slides now. Um, this, as I said, is USA.gov. They also provide kids.gov. So um, they're very uh, conscious of trying to provide information to um, to children and for uh, teachers. And so a lot of the um, websites we look at will have something for kids. This, I thought this was kind of cool. The president posts, whoops, that didn't, oh, that's right, these are slides. I can't click on it. <laughs> um, the president poster, I did, I did print it out um, as a PDF, and it's a, sort of a, a um, how you get to be president, if you want to be oh, president. Cool. Uh, you can order it, and they'll send it to you, but you also can uh, print it out if you need it right away. So, you know, they're kind of uh, trying to provide information. Okay, now one of the things that I'm covering here today is the Smithsonian Institution, which is not technically one of these independent agencies. But I thought it was so cool, and it wasn't anywhere else that we probably ought to cover. Uh, the Smithsonian Institution is, of course, um, a, a group, really, of 19 um, museums and uh, the zoo, and then there are other research institutions as well. It was started uh, with a request by British scientist James Smithson in uh, 1826, and he left his entire estate to the U.S. to start museum, basically. Uh, the Smithsonian website is huge. Uh, there's a lot of really interesting stuff. You could just get lost there and spend days because it's mm -hmm. fascinating. Um, this is all the museums and the zoo that they have. So um, the Q Cooper Hewitt, um, but they also have the Smithsonian Institution building, um, the American Indian Museum, the Air and Space Museum, it's just pretty nifty. Um, one of the things they have online is what they call the Encyclopedia Smithsonian. Um, 
which helps you find uh, some of the information they have online that they've provided. For instance, I searched here about textiles, and here's a little article about how do I store antique textiles at home. So you can get this kind of information, which I think is, is really pretty interesting and very, very useful. Um, they also have the Smithsonian Library, and the library has a um, directory of library and archival exhibitions on the web. I did a search for, um, I think it was for clothing, and found quite a few. These were from all over the world. Here's the first one from the Museum of London, and I clicked on a few of them just to see what I was getting, and, well, they were fabulous. Um, and I lost a few minutes, but then I, I got it back, and I didn't have time to search all of them in depth. But really, these exhibitions online are just beautiful, and and just show some extraordinary things. So I thought this was very cool and something that you might want to use. They also have tools for the researcher. Um, if you want to search their library catalogs, if you want to search um, some of the, their archives. The Smithsonian has huge archives. Um, they tell you how to do it, how to borrow things from them. Okay. The next thing is the National Endowment for the Arts. Um, this time I tried to kind of arrange things by subject, sort of group things a little bit, so they're not strictly alphabetical. Um, and I don't know how well this really worked, but we'll give it a shot. Uh, the National Endowment for the Arts um, is uh, basically meant to support the arts. They give out grants. Their uh, budget request uh, for fiscal year 2013 was $154 million, which sounds like a lot, but you know, and it's a very awesome. small mm -hmm. amount in the government um, budget overall. So, um, you know, it, and it's pretty nice that we can support the arts a little bit. It makes us feel like a civilized. Um, the National Endowment for the Humanities, um, the, they say the term humanity includes, but it, this is a quote, but is not limited to the study and interpretation of the following. Language, linguistics, literature, history, jurisprudence, philosophy, archaeology, comparative religion, ethics, the history, criticism, and theory of the arts, those aspects of social sciences which have humanistic content and employ humanistic methods, and the study and application of the humanities to the human environment. And that was kind of a um, abridgment of that. But uh, they do um, they do some studies and things, but mostly, again, they give grants uh, to support the humanities. And curiously enough, their budget request was for $154 million, too. Mm -hmm. Then the next thing is the National Archives and Records Administration, and this is where they keep the records. They make a point of saying that they don't keep all records forever, but they try to keep what they think are important. They have military records. They have the Census, the Census Bureau, which is part of the Department of Commerce, as we saw in our first um, presentation. Um, they take the census. Then, by law, that census cannot disclose information about any individuals for 72 years. So the 1940 census from 72 years ago was opened just this year, and now genealogists can get in there and find information about the individuals who reported to that census. Um, and we actually did a Encompass Live about that as well. Yeah. So if you're looking for more information, you can go back and look at our archives. Okay. <laughs> but it is the National Archive that has that, not, not the Census Bureau. They also have, for reasons that I'm not completely clear on, the Electoral College. Now, um, of course, the Electoral College is sort of in the news right now because we're going to be needing it in a couple of weeks. Um, basically, after an election, each state elects electors from the party that won, except for Nebraska and Maine. Uh, Nebraska and Maine will actually split their vote. Each state gets the number of electors that is their, the number of their representatives in the House of Representatives plus their two senators. So Nebraska has five electoral votes, 
and we will split them up by congressional district. So, for instance, in the 2008 election, Mr. Obama uh, did get one electoral vote mm -hmm. from Nebraska mm -hmm. because yeah. he carried the second legislative district. Um, so it's actually the electors who um, elect the president. Uh, there are, of course, uh, movements to reform the Electoral College, as we always want to reform everything. But right now, this is the deal, and that's, uh, that's where the Electoral College is in the National Archives. And the next thing is the Institute of Museum and Library Services, something that's of interest to us. They, of course, give us grants ask for our statistics, and that's one thing I did want to show you because I think it's very, very cool, is the Compare Public Library Utility. Um, you can go in there, select the libraries you want to compare, and see how their statistics will compare. Um, you can, this is another place where you can spend a lot of time, but it's very useful to be able to do a little uh, benchmarking and see how your library is doing compared to other libraries of the same size or with the same kind of budget. Um, so uh, this can be a very useful tool. I wanted to point it out. Okay, now we're uh, leaving the humanities and we're moving to the Director of National Intelligence. Um, this is fairly recent. It used to be that the CIA did National Intelligence, which they still do. But the Director of National Intelligence, this office is kind of created to um, coordinate the work of 17 agencies and organizations. So it's Air Force Intelligence, the Department of the Treasury, Army Intelligence, Drug Enforcement Administration, the CIA, the FBI, the Coast Guard, the Marines. Well, you get the idea. Um, and they list them all there if you need to know. Uh, James R. Clapper is the Director of National Intelligence. Um, so this is supposed to be to help them coordinate more. Uh, next intelligence agency we have is the Central Intelligence Agency, which has a fabulous website. Mm -hmm. They're just very cool. Who knew the CIA would have a sense of humor? Um, the CIA puts out and has put out for a long time the World Factbook. And it's really nice because it gives you nice profiles of the countries in the world. So, for instance, I chose Syria. And here I get a map showing me where it is in relation to other countries, a little map that shows me Syria and the major cities, their flag. And then all of these things, I don't know if you can really read them, um, all these things you can expand. So, for instance, here's the introduction to Syria. Um, so really nice, um, compact um, reference tool on countries. The world, the world factor also includes a list of world leaders, and this is um, leaders and cabinet um, ministers around the world. Um, very quick way to look these things up. So this is something that you really might want to have bookmarked because you can do a lot of you know, quick reference this way. And they have a thing where they will compare, they will rank, essentially, countries of the world on particular points. Um, they have a list you pick out, and you could pick out infant mortality rate, you could pick out average income. I picked obesity, just because I thought it was a little different. And um, the U.S. ranks only sixth in the world. Um, America, Samoa, uh, is number one for obesity in the world. But um, I thought this country comparisons was kind of interesting and again, um, kind of a, a, a neat source for that sort of fact, especially if kids are doing reports or something. You know, it's really a good reference source. They also have maps at the CIA and they have a great kids page. Um, you know, you see the little spy there and they tell about the CIA and they have games. And not all of them are kids' games. I mean, they're games for cracking the code and aerial analysis challenge. Um, but it just looked like these were fabulous. Um, I just thought, wow, this is really fun. This, this is a place, again, where you could bookmark this and have this available for the kids um, in your library if 
they want to play games. These are some nice games, interesting games to play. Um, okay, now we're going to the Consumer Product Safety Commission, which is charged with um, trying to keep products, uh, making sure that people, the products are safe and that people know about unsafe products. Um, one of the things they do is send you to www.recalls.gov. Now this is something the government seems to be do, doing more and more of, which is uh, calling something the subject, you know, recalls.gov. And this is actually a website that the agencies listed there, the USDA, the FDA, the uh, Coast Guard, several others, um, collaborate on. And so but you can get to all the recalls um, of products through this website. Uh, these are listed in the USA.gov, and I kind of recommend them. Um, they're really pretty good. Now we get to some of the regulatory um, commissions. A lot of these independent agencies are regulatory. Uh, the first one here, the Federal Trade Commission, is about business practices. So again, it's watching out for consumers, but while the Consumer Product Safety Commission was about products, this is about business practices. Uh, so for instance, they have a whole bunch of stuff on identity theft, how to avoid it, what to do if it happens. Um, and uh, many of these agencies too, this is typical that they will have, in addition to their regulatory role, which is their major role, really, but they will have consumer information. Um, they do want to directly reach um, voters. Um, so the next one is the Nuclear, Nuclear Regulatory Commission. They have a facility locator. You can find out where nuclear facilities are. Um, the Environmental Protection Agency. Um, and they have a whole bunch of stuff on all different uh, kinds of bad things that could happen to the environment, including bed bugs. Um, and this is about pesticides. Um, so, again, the Environmental Protection Agency has a regulatory role, but they also provide consumer information about the environment. So they talk about water quality, air quality, mold, um, all kinds of things. Then we get to the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. I think you know what they do. They really um, work with workers who have been discriminated against. They try to make sure that people are not discriminated against. And they're talking here about um, the EEOC and religious and national origin um, discrimination and how, how you can avoid that. So that's the EEOC. Also, um, I have not given you uh, the out the um, handout page that I had for the others, partly because you can get these all on USA.gov, and partly because almost all of them are www.eeoc.gov. The uh, Environmental Protection Agency is www.epa.gov. So they're, they're kind of, they follow a pattern. Well, we will. Have you put them into Delicious yet? Or? I have not. Okay. Them into I'll do that after the show. Someone did actually ask yeah. me in the handouts because the first step, the first part one of this, we did do a, a word oh, document. Part, part two, I did. Okay. Um, but they'll all be into our Delicious accounts when the recording goes up. There'll be a yeah. link where you can get to all of them if you want from there as well. And I, I do actually have a handout. It probably doesn't have everything on it because. Well, quite honestly, I was working on this thing pretty much up to the deadline. <laughs> um, but I have a handout. If you want to email me, I can send it to you. I'd be happy to. Um, okay, the next thing is the Federal Communications Commission, which um, is the Federal Communications Commission. Um, regulates the airwaves. And, you know, it used to be radio and TV. Well, now it's broadband and internet, and um, the FCC is finding themselves, um, you know, with whole new technologies to talk about. And they, too, provide some consumer information. Here's the thing about 3G and 4G wireless. Um, so it's basic information, but really this is not a bad uh, explanation of some of the um, 
things that you may be hearing about or you know just need a basic information basic information to tell people. Um, mostly again, the Federal Communications Commission is a regulatory agency, but it does have consumer information. We have the Federal Election Commission. They're mostly to enforce campaign finance laws, but they do have lists of um, who the contributors are to campaigns. Um, the uh, Electoral College is not part of the Federal Election Commission. Um, and, you know, it's regulatory. Uh, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. Now, it used to be commodities were pretty much traded uh, it, it, you know, as a way for um, producers, farm, farmers, to um, to kind of uh, lock in prices early so they know, so there, there isn't a lot of uncertainty. But now we have people trading in futures as, um, well, they're high-risk investments is what they are. And they're meant to um, help smooth out risk and, you know, you can do all kinds of things. But the Commodity Futures Trading Commission does regulate that. Um, then we have the Securities and Exchange Commission, the larger regulatory agency. This, this commission um, regulates all of the publicly traded companies in America. Um, and even I think have some regulations for foreign countries that trade on U.S. exchanges. Um, the Securities and Exchange Commission has a big website for investors talking about investing, how to invest, what to look for when you're investing. They also have this huge um, reference um, resource, which is EDGAR. EDGAR stands for Electronic Data Gathering Analysis and Retrieval System. And I bet somebody stayed up late trying to think that one. <laughs> but EDGAR is where the public companies put their filings. Um, all public companies have to report on their finances. They have to put out a, um, a report once a year that they call the 10K. And that is, that is not the same thing as their annual report. Annual reports frequently have a lot of um, verbiage in them and we'll talk a lot about the company. The 10K really just wants the financial report. Um, and then the 10Qs, which are the quarterly reports. They also, the proxy statements, if you own uh, stocks, say you own 10 shares of something, you will get a proxy statement and what they're saying is when we get to the annual meeting, will you let us vote? Because of course when you own stock, you own a piece of the company and you get to vote on things at the annual meetings. And they want to be able to do your vote, the, the people, the board of directors, wants to vote your stock for you. And unless you're really a big stockholder, the chances are you will let them. But the one thing the proxy statement has in it is it has compensation for the top executives. Mm -hmm. So that's why we look at the proxy statement. There are other um, filings as well. If a company buys back its own stock, if it issues a new stock, um, any kind of financial dealings, they really have to tell about. They have to make public. The idea is that everybody should have um, information on a company so that there is a flat playing field. Um, Edgar is a big, big, very big. Um, it's a database and you can it's searchable. They have a tutorial. Um, they will explain it, but it's a little tricky if you're not used to it. Um, I searched here for Apple and what I got was a little rundown on Apple and then a list of all their different files. Um, that I could click through and actually see the files and see what they reported about their finances. So Edgar is a fabulous resource, um, but they don't massage the data. So it can, it, it takes kind of an educated eye. Nevertheless, the data is there and it's good data. Um, so another uh, financial kind of um, agency and another big one is the Federal Reserve System. Now the Federal Reserve is really the bank of the United States and they control the money supply. Um, 
you put less money in circulation and interest rates go up. More money in circulation, interest rates go down. And that's a gross oversimplification. But this is Ben Bernanke. Uh, we've heard a lot about the Fed in um, uh, the news in the last several years. But this is the Federal Reserve System. They put out a lot of publications. Um, some consumer information, some very technical financial information. Um, one of the things they do, for instance, I picked out one, kind of just to show you. This is selected interest rates daily. It's the daily update. And then you can see down here at the bottom, this list continues. And there were a whole bunch of different kinds of interest rates. So this is what the Fed is, is talking about is um, interest, money supply. Uh, they're talking about economics in a pretty macro way. Um, again, fabulous information um, and really a lot of it. Another federal, um, well, they're not federal. Uh, another federal financial Thing, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. They essentially will insure your bank account for up to $250,000. So um, if you have $250,001, open another account somewhere. Um, the FDIC really is charged with um, keeping confidence in our banks. Remember, during the Depression, there were a lot of runs on banks and things. It, it wasn't pretty. Um, so the FDIC is meant to keep confidence. They also, they examine and supervise banks. So a lot of this website is about how you examine banks and what banks are supposed to do. And they manage receiverships. If a bank isn't doing so well, the FDIC will step in and say, you know, no, we, we, have, to, we have to merge with someone else or we have to do something here. Um, they try not to let banks really fail and, you know, let people lose money. Um, but you will see this over and over on the bank, on your bank account. The FDIC, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, they um, insure your money so it's safe in your bank. The Farm Credit Administration um, meant to help farmers by providing sources of credit for them. Um, I don't say much more about it than that, but this is another one of the federal agencies that is not so much regulatory as um, meant to help people. Uh, then we have the Small Business Administration. Now the Small Business Administration is not regulatory. It in fact has four um, real goals. Um, helping people get financing for their business. Um, entrepreneurial development. Because remember, um, we want to grow our economy and the way we do this is by making business grow or starting new businesses. So the SBA is important in that. They also help people um, get government contracts to do business with their government and advocacy for small business. Um, they have a lot of information about how to start a business, what to do when you have your business. Um, and it really is a good site. It's a really good source of information for many of those people who come in your library and say, oh, I want to start a business about this. Uh, for instance, here's a thing they have on how to hire and retain employees. Uh, they also talk about how to write a business plan, um, how to get loans, how to get grants, all kinds of things. But the Small Business Administration really uh, does a lot of work with um, with businesses. They do have offices around the country um, and, you know, they, they are a source of a lot of help to business people. Okay, then we come to the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA. And I think you've all seen that NASA has huge uh, educational programs. Um, they really want to share what they're doing. Um, and it's a great website. It's so beautiful beautiful pictures of, you know, outer space, other planets. Um, it's, it really is a wonder, it, they have multimedia. They, it's a wonderful site for teachers, for, for um, 
uh, for kids. Um, so we really recommend this. This again is not a regulatory agency. This is an agency. I think that's one of the things about these agencies, as opposed to the cabinet departments, is that these agencies tend to have a um, much more narrowly defined um, focus. Um, so you know, you, you see the things we've gone through. The SEC it just regulates public corporations. Um, the FTC business practices. They tend to have a focus that isn't as broad as some of the cabinet departments, which are doing a lot of different things. Um, okay, then we we'll move down to science, as you can see, and the next science thing is the National Science Foundation. Now we had the uh, National Endowment for the Humanities, we have the National Endowment for the Arts, this is the National Science Foundation, again, making um, grants to support science. Um, it was started back in Truman's um, administration and um, you know, has done a lot of work to um, underwrite scientific discoveries. They say, you know, that they've helped win a lot of Nobel Prizes. And, uh, and, you know, they do a lot of good stuff. The National Transportation Safety Board, they are charged with investigating all civil aviation accidents. So every time there's a plane crash, the NTSB has to go out. They also investigate um, accidents, significant accidents. I don't know quite what significant is, but they said significant accidents and other modes of transportation. But the NTSB is largely concerned with investigating um, wind crashes. Uh, that's what they do. Then, more um, transportation, the National Railroad Passenger Corporation, or aka Amtrak. Uh, you can actually buy your Amtrak ticket here. Um, this website, or find out about the trains, find out about their history, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, Amtrak, I don't think, although I know some great railroad enthusiasts, and we have the Union Pacific here um, in Omaha, um, I think a lot of people are into Amtrak, does run a lot of passenger trains across the country, but I think the East Coast is where they're heading. So, mm -hmm. Um, nevertheless, and you can get lots of places using train if you want to. Oh, one of our colleagues, Bill Ainsley, just took a vacation and took a train all around and took it to California and out the back um, because he enjoys training. Mm -hmm. um, and that's all Amtrak. So, you know, there you go. Um, then we have the Peace Corps, which is, of course, a very different, um, not regulatory at all, a, a place that it was meant to um, help people. It was officially established in 1961. Um, they've had over 200,000 volunteers to date. Um, they serve in 139 countries. Um, current number of volunteers is about 8,000. 62% uh, female, 38% male. So guys, come on, step up. <laughs> 93% um, of the people are single who volunteer. Um, the average age is 28. 7% of the volunteers are over 50. Um, the current number of countries served is 76. Um, about 43% of them work in education, and there's lists of what else they're doing. 43% um, of them are in Africa, 21% in Latin America. Eastern Europe and Central Asia, 15%, and Asia, 10%. So the Peace Corps is all over the world. Um, they will give you information about their programs. They will also show, tell you how to sign up. They have a video that you can watch to see if this is really for you or not. Um, they want to be sure that people who sign up really uh, know what they're getting into and understand uh, the program. Their budget is um, about $375 million. Um, so that is the Peace Corps. And then another way to serve is the Selective Service System. Now, yes, 
Young men between the ages of 18 and 25 in the United States must register. Um, they have a whole chart about who has to register, um, and pretty much everybody, even illegal immigrants have to register. I'm not quite sure how they work that out, but they, they tell you you have to register. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that anybody would be drafted, people haven't been drafted in some time, but you have to register. So it's just one thing to keep in mind. Um, but it's only men, which is discriminatory, I think. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then Social Security Administration. Now, I didn't go into this very much because I think that people do know that Social Security, um, what they do. Uh, they provide funds for people who are retired, um, people with orphans, um, Medicare, but we, as we've seen, Medicare is mostly in the, um, the Department of Health, the Family Department of Health. Um, a disability. Um, so they have a lot of, um, it's a big site, they have a lot of, in, a lot of consumer information because this again is one of the agencies that is meant um, to aid people. But, um, you know, you can go there and pretty much find the forms and the things you need. Um, and we could probably do a whole hour on Social Security. I don't know. We'll just keep it short. So. And U.S. Postal Service. Um, Postal Service uh, has tried really to provide a lot of um, customer service. Um, it's a quick, they have a quick zip code lookup. So this again is one of those things to keep uh, bookmarked on your computer because you can quickly find, uh, you put in an address and it tells you what the zip code is, which is very nice. They also have a, a postage price calculator so you know um, if you want to send a package. And then they do have some ordering stamps online and things like that. They have a um, a, like a store where you can buy stamps um, and you know collectors buy stamps and things. Mm -hmm. So that was the postal service. No, actually we moved through this. I moved through this very fast today. Mm -hmm. um, if there are any questions, I'd like to. I'd be happy to take them. Sure. Um, but this is the postal service was the last. I think your contact info is the. Oh, and I do have my contact info. Mm -hmm. If you want um, the list of um, URLs, I do have. One and I can say it's a document, it's a Word document, but I can send it to you if you like. And um, as we've been going through the session, well, I started about halfway through, but when you think about it, <laughs> um, I've been adding them to the Commission's Delicious Accounts. So, um, and I'll go back and do all the other ones too from like the first half. So, when the recording is available, you'll be able to click on link and get a list of all the ones from this session together as yes. well in that and there. So, does anybody have any questions? As I said, there are many more of these if we go back to. Um, the list at um, USA.gov, you'll see that there were a lot I didn't get to, but, you know, the Advisory Council on Historic Preservation, I'm sure they do a lot of interesting and worthwhile work. But I tried to choose the ones that I thought um, people had heard about, people would need to know about, or would provide um, information useful to the reference library. Right. A lot of these I can see there's things that if you're in the, in the library situation, someone would come to your desk and want something yeah. about these things. Like well, that was business good. information, especially, you know, some universities do subscribe to databases. Like, oh, yes, they, they do. But there is a lot of, this is good to know, there's free information on there, too, that you don't have to pay for if you're not one of those universities that can pay for yeah, a special oh. database because you get that kind of question so infrequently. Mm -hmm. It's good to know that there is a place where you can still go to get good, accurate, the actual from the horse's mouth, so to speak, from yeah. the companies. Yes, yeah. yeah. so yeah. think about the Securities and Exchange Commission and think about the Small Business Administration. There's a lot of 
information there. Um, but, and, you know, look over this list um, and look over USA.gov because really whenever you have a question um, that asks for information that you think, you're, and the government has information about, you know, pretty much everything. Um, that's one of the things that I have been really impressed by doing this because, you know, I had to do some, okay, I had to do a lot of research. I didn't know all of this. Um, is how much they do. And there are great things they do. I mean, these are things that are really helping people, really giving people stray information, um, really trying to make life better for people, I think. And um, so I've been really impressed by the things that they do. And look, for instance, almost all of these websites somewhere have a little button where you can make it Spanish. Um, I think that's very nice that they provide information in a way that some people who are new to our country, who are new citizens, um, are more comfortable um, and they still can get the information because, of course, that's what's important, is that people get the information and understand. Um, so remember to get services where um, you can, these are some of the top services. And I thought these were fun. High cheapest gas prices, for instance. That's nice. Look, in Nebraska. And uh, Lincoln gas prices today. Really? I mean, they're naming names here. <laughs> Um, you know, the cook shop at 4750 calories is the cheapest gas in Lincoln today. Um, where's my go back? Um, I've lost it. Yeah, right. uh, I gotta get back to the, uh, this thing. Yeah. It's getting behind the speed. Oh, we don't have a new tab. Oh, that's okay. it. We have a new tab. Oh, we have a new tab. Um, you know, we had gas prices for cities in Nebraska. I mean, I thought that was kind of cool. Um, yeah. um, shop government auctions and, look at, you know, again, all the services that they will link to, and they occasionally do link to things that are not even um, government. The Electoral College Calculator, this game you can play, um, you can figure out how you think all the electors, and it shows you how many uh, elector, electoral votes every state has, and you can figure out who you think will win. Which I thought was kind of funny. So if you have any questions, feel free to type them into the questions section of the GoToWebinar interface. Or if you have a microphone, let us know, and I can unmute you, and you can use your microphone, either way. During the session, nobody had any questions, so it must have been covering things adequately, or, or we stultified them. <laughs> but um, I really enjoyed doing this. I, I have a lot of fun looking at the stuff. Um, there's a lot of amazing things on these websites, and I know that these people don't have time to spend as much time exploring as you like to me. Um, but I do recommend that if you, you know, if you have a little time um, or you give yourself, you know, 20 minutes every week or something to explore, um, I don't think you'll be disappointed. I think you'll, you'll find a lot of information that you will um, be able to use. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and even go to like history, arts, and culture. And they give us the different things. Yeah, so it's not just dry government statistics and information. No, it's <laughs> not. It's not. And here, you know, how to find libraries, where the federal libraries are, grants for libraries. Yeah. Um, so I do recommend USA.gov as a um, first line to go to, to search. And um, we do have a couple of comments. Well, 
Lisa just says, excellent, thank you very much. Oh, wow. And another uh, one very Melissa, who apparently has been, I don't know if she's been live on all three of them, I don't remember, but she says, um, thanks so much, these three sessions have been fabulous. My mind is racing with ways to make this info available to our patrons, homeschooling, parents, students, etc. So, yeah, definitely. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm glad it's useful to people. <laughs> you know, that was the idea. Yeah. Where to put them on your website, where to maybe create handouts or, yeah, or guides or something to get people to certain things that they're always asking about. Um, there, yeah. Well, you know, if you want to put a link of the day or a link of the week yeah. on your website, um, you know, try uh, printing out like a little poster on how to become president of the United States um, because it has a little information about, you know, where you got it. Um, yeah, these things can really be um, um, really marketing for your library as well. Wow. Okay, well, it doesn't, look like, any, it. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. look like any major questions are coming in right now. That's fine. Um, so thank you very much, everyone, for attending. And thank you very much, Laura, for putting together these three sessions. Um, I'm just going to bring up. Uh, there was a lot. Of, this is... Uh, there's so much out there government related, yeah, so there's a lot of information. <laughs> so it's great to have all these. So thank you very much for putting these three things together. So Laura's idea, she came to me and said, I want to do this series of, <laughs> of, of webinars about government online. And I was like, hey, great, I'll go do it. I'll put it on the show. <laughs> um, so, so that is our third in this series. As I, and as I said, um, they were recorded. So this is the Encompass Live website. Um, NLC.nebraska.gov forward slash Encompass Live. But as you saw, if you just Google Encompass Live, we're in the first result. Nobody else tells themselves this. Um, we do have a Facebook page. So if you do um, use Facebook, we, rec we suggest definitely liking us on Facebook. And um, you will all cause logged in. You'll be able to do that. Uh, there we go. Um, so anytime we have an episode, we put it on here. Um, announcing it, um, letting you know when the recordings are available. Um, I posted earlier right before this session to join us right now. We do allow people to you can register for sessions or you can come in on the fly. I know some of you did. Um, so we do post when it's available. So definitely uh, like us on our Facebook page so you can get up to date information there. Um, I said all of our sessions are recorded on our Encompass Live page right beneath the list of upcoming sessions. We have a link to our archives. And this is where you find, as I said, all of our archives going back to January 2009. But the two previous government online sessions are here as well. The previous one we did in September was the, um, the Florida in September, the White House Legislative and Judicial Branch. And then the first one back in August on the Executive Branch. So both those recordings are here with their um, the PowerPoint presentation she used is available through our SlideShare account and links to all of the URLs in each session. Um, in our delicious account. And this session will be posted up there in the same way. I've got the slides, the links will be up there, so you'll be able to have access to all three of those um, when this one is ready. So that is your government online. Next week, I hope you'll join us for our regular monthly tech talk with Michael Sowers. Michael Sowers is the technology innovation librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission. And he is currently out at, in um, Monterey, California at the Internet Librarian Conference. Um, Internet Library in 2012, and uh, he'll be coming back tomorrow. But next week he's going to do Reflections in Internet Library, and he's um, gathering people who will come on the show with us um, from all over the country who attended to talk about their experiences at the conference. So um, I hope that we've done, previously we've done live shows from Internet Library and from Computers and Libraries when it's in Washington, D.C. in the spring. Um, this year we didn't do that. Um, We've had some uh, equipment issues on our own, so we decided to skip that live show this year. <laughs> um, but uh, he's going to have them um, next week do a um, looking back on what was happened at the conference this week. So um, I hope you'll join him next week and when he um, tells about all the fun he had in Monterey and all the learning he did. Yes. Oh, what? Things, new things. To, you know, I'm going to talk to you usually. Yes. Yeah. So. Uh, join us next week for that, and it doesn't look like any questions have come in. Just some thank yous to you. Very interesting, thank Joe. You. <laughs> so thank you very much, everyone, for attending, and I hope you'll join us next week in our future shows. Thank you very much, and bye-bye.